What's up everyone, Jessica Dean here. Today's video is gonna focus on networking policy and specifically just how easy it is to get started with networking policy in Kubernetes. Now to accomplish this, we're gonna use something called Project Calico. Project Calico is open source and it supports all major clouds, Google, Azure, and Amazon. It also supports a broad range of platforms, including Kubernetes, Docker Enterprise Edition, OpenShift, OpenStack, and even bare metal services. Now you might be wondering, why do we care about networking policies? And honestly, I am so glad you asked. By default, Kubernetes has what's called a flat network, meaning any service or any pod can communicate with any other service or any other pod. So Project Calico is going to allow us to create what's called a network policy object. That network policy object will either allow that communication or that traffic between services and pods, or it will deny traffic between services and pods. Now the cluster that we're gonna use in today's demo is an Azure Kubernetes cluster, and in AKS specifically, in order to use the integrated Calico networking policy support, you do have to enable it at the time of cluster creation. There'll be links to docs and everything down below. I will also link to Calico's documentation on how you can add Calico manually to a cluster after the fact, but I will let you know that that is a little bit more complicated. My recommendation would be to set Calico up at the time of cluster creation. Let's check this out. All right, so to get started with network policy, all we're gonna need is access to a terminal that has access to our Kubernetes cluster. So you can see I'm gonna use my Tailwind Traders cluster and I'm gonna run any command by default against the default namespace. Unless I specify dash N to change the namespace, that's where we're gonna be running our commands. So let's take a look at what we have currently going on in our cluster. If I do K get pods, you'll notice in the default cluster, right? Unless I specify dash N, I'm running this against default. I just have a rabbit MQ pod. If I do K get services, you'll notice I have RabbitMQ services and Kubernetes. We're gonna focus on RabbitMQ in a future video, but for right now, I don't have anything weird going on or any crazy pods or services. I can run these same commands though and see what I have going on in another namespace. So let's do kgetpods-n, and I'm gonna check for my pods in my TWT namespace. TWT stands for Tailwind Traders. That's gonna be the hypothetical production application we'll use for today's demo. Now you'll notice I have a bunch of microservices, right? I have carts, I have coupons, I have mobile components, front end components, stock components. I have a lot of different things. In fact, if I do K get services and I search in the same namespace, I have corresponding services to go along with those pods. Now remember in Kubernetes, we have a flat network which means any of these pods can communicate with anything, regardless of what namespace it lives in. So let's go ahead and test this out. Down here, I'm gonna go ahead and use the Kubernetes binary. Pronunciation preference up to you. You can tell I use the letter K. Hopefully that encompasses kube control, kube CTL, or kube cuddle. I know there's gonna be someone in the comments saying, I don't wanna cuddle with my Kubernetes cluster. Good for you, good for you, social distancing. But down here, I'm gonna go ahead and run just an Alpine image, and we're gonna name that network policy. That's gonna be the name of the pod. So in fact, up here, if I do K get pods again, and this is running in the default namespace, because I didn't specify a namespace over here to run it, now I have that pod that has been up for 12 seconds named network policy, right? That was the name we assigned it down here. And I used dash IT to jump into the pod itself. So if we remember the different services I have going on, right? I have car coupons, login, stock, my front end for my web. Let's go ahead and actually test that out. So I can go down here in my Alpine image in the network policy pod that we started, and I'm gonna do W get stock. But if I just do stock, it's not going to work because this pod lives in default. Anytime I want to check or communicate with a pod in a different namespace, I'm gonna to need to add a period and the name of that namespace. So in this case, because the namespace is TWT, 
I'm going to do wgetstock.twt. I hit enter and just like that, I'm able to communicate with the stock service running in the TWT namespace. Now I can do the same thing with, let's say the front end, wgettweb.twt. And again, it can't communicate or it can communicate. It can't open the file because index.html exists. You can see that right here. We can even remove index.html, rerun the ttweb wget, and just like that, it's still able to communicate. Now, what I also have going on on these pods is I have what's called a label. So let's go ahead and clear this. I'm going to do kget pods twt, only this time I'm going to search for any pods running in the twt namespace with a label. That's what the dash L stands for right here. A label of role equals twt app. So if I hit enter, you can see all of my pods running in that namespace also have a label attached. The label is going to be important because we're going to use that right now to attach a network policy to it. So let's go ahead and clear. And down here, I'm just going to go ahead and do a watch command on wgetstock.twt. And we'll know that right now index.html already exists, but it's able to communicate to that, right? We'll let this watch command run. Up here, we're going to go ahead and apply a network policy. We're going to create a network policy object. That's what we see under kind. And we're going to say that we want to match a selector, match labels in particular, and anything that has that role TWT app label, we're going to have the network policy applied to it. So if I hit enter, that now creates a network policy object. In fact, I can do k get pods dash n TWT, and we don't want pods, we want network policy. And I'll hit enter. And you can see there's the TWT policy that we just created 13 seconds ago. You can see I gave it a name, TWT policy. So all of that matches. And down here, you can see our watch command now timed out. In fact, we can cancel it. And I can do a LS to see our index HTML. I'm going to go ahead and remove that. So now we don't have it anymore. And we'll do again, wgetstock.twt. And just like that, it still can't communicate. Now let's go ahead and delete that policy object. So if we rerun the same command, only now we say delete, that's going to delete the policy object. So if I run the get network policy and see what it returns, I shouldn't have anything now, right? There's no resource objects that exist. So if I go back down here and rerun the w get command, just like that, it's able to communicate with that service again. So that's how easy it is. Once you have your cluster set up with Calico, all you need to do is create or apply a network policy object based on whatever your parameter is. In this case, we used a label. I'm going to link resources to docs down below where you can check out Calico, you can check out Azure, you can check out Kubernetes, and we'll walk you through getting started with everything. Thanks for hanging out with me. Have a great day.